Hello, welcome. This is the third video in the Be a Good Person to People with Cancer series. This video is all about how to care for somebody that has cancer. So this is just how to help a cancer patient that you live with, that you're going to be looking after. I got a text message and I, I just can't do multiple things at once. I was trying to read it while talking to you and it just doesn't work. The other two videos in this series are what to say to someone with cancer and what to do for someone with cancer. So if you are a person that knows someone who has just been diagnosed with cancer and you're not living with them but you are a really close friend, those videos might be better suited for you. This is more for the people that are going to really be looking after the people that have cancer or are just really, really close friends with them. It's kind of impossible to make this video because every person is different and every cancer diagnosis is different. So there's not a set of rules that you should follow, but there's just a few basic things I wanna talk about because they're things that my family did, my boyfriend did, anyone that was really, really close to me that was helping me through my diagnosis, these things really helped me. When I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, one of the very first things that happened was I told my mom. Once I told my mom, my mom told my dad. And I wasn't the one going around telling every single person that I had cancer. There were certain people that really needed to know that I had cancer, like my siblings, my grandmother, um, other family members that are close. I did not necessarily need to tell everyone in that moment. Um, you can tell people when it's best for you, but for me, I know that I needed those people to know, but I didn't necessarily want to be the one to have to call everyone and give them that news. Basically what my mom did was give everybody jobs. It sounds really strange, but it actually helped so much. When you are hit with a cancer diagnosis, there is just so much stuff. There's You don't even know. There's just so much stuff that you need to figure out. There's so much stuff to research. You don't know what type of treatment's going to be best. You don't know how you're going to be feeling on the treatment. Some people can do all the research and some people do do all the research. There's a lot of research to do, but it is a lot. And if you are the type of person that needs to know every detail about something, it is going to be impossible to do all of that research yourself. So it really helps if you can um, split up the jobs a little bit and some people focus on one thing while some people focus on another thing. My grandmother was in charge of looking up wig information and other headwear information because I wasn't even sure at that point um, if I wanted to wear a wig or what type of headwear I wanted. But instead of me having to go through and look up all that information, she really uh, looked into all of that for me and then was able to kind of show me the things that I would like or just give me all the options so that I wouldn't have to do that research myself. She was the one that said that if I wanted a wig, I should go and talk to someone before my hair started falling out because then I would be able to get one that really matched my type of hair. They would be able to see what my hair looked like and they would be able to help me better. My sister was in charge of looking up all of the fertility stuff. Chemo can damage your ovaries and she was looking up if I would want to freeze my eggs or freeze embryos and there's different processes you can go about that. There's other ways to freeze your eggs than the traditional IVF way, I think, also. So there was lots of things that she looked up so that when we went in and then we had that appointment with my fertility doctor, she had like a notebook of stuff that she brought and she had all of this information and all of these questions that she could ask. So many things that I didn't even think to research that I didn't even look up myself just because uh, she was <laughs> on top of it. One of my brothers was in charge of calling relatives. I don't think he was the only one that was in charge of doing that, but he was kind of in charge of calling a lot of the relatives that were not like super close by to us that we would have to make a phone call. I wouldn't say I was out of the loop, but I was so just, I don't care. like let the people know, but I just don't want to have to do it. So I don't know how they ended up telling my family, but they ended up telling my family before I made a public Facebook post about it, which was probably not until 
a month after my diagnosis. And my mom was kind of in charge of almost everything else. She was looking up chemo, she was looking up the surgery, she was looking up the radiation. Once we learned that I had a genetic mutation, there's so much research that goes into that just knowing what that mutation means and the type of treatment you should do based on that mutation. If the person that is diagnosed with cancer has a genetic mutation, you might want to do some research into that just to make sure you know what you're dealing with and what kinds of treatment you should do. I have four main parts of treatment. I had chemo, I had surgery, I had radiation, and now I'm on hormone therapy. And there's so much research to do on all of those types of things. Really, we could trust our doctors to a certain extent. Um, my type of breast cancer was really well known and very common, and um, it's treated the same way a lot of the time. So there wasn't that much question in my course of action, but more rare types of cancer, um, there's not really a set way to do things all the time. So you might wanna do some more research into that. So research is really just the biggest thing. Um, the cancer patient isn't gonna wanna be the one that's looking into all this research, or maybe they are. So if they are, let them do it. But I did not want to, I just wanted somebody to kind of tell me what to do. I wanted someone to give me all of the options and when I needed to make a decision, I would make a decision. I wanted to trust my doctors, but your doctors aren't going to your doctors care about you, but they don't care about you as much as your family does. So they're going to really be the ones that help you make really important decisions. Your doctors know a lot too, so I'm not saying not to trust them or not to listen to them because I certainly do and I certainly did. So if you know someone with cancer and you're looking after someone with cancer, there is a lot of research. Just know this and if you're not going to get all the information that you need or want by yourself. Uh, ask other people to help you, ask other people that know the person going through it to help you. Especially in the beginning, you're going into so many new appointments. I was having an appointment with radiologists, and I was having appointments with oncologists, I was having appointments with the breast surgeon, the plastic surgeon, in case I needed reconstruction, I was having appointments with the fertility doctor, I was having a million scans, like financial like helper, planner people, nutritionists, so many people. If you assign jobs to people and let them deal with each individual thing, when you go and you meet with radiation or you meet with oncology, you'll have that one person that has all the research can ask questions. It's really important to go into appointments, just especially in the beginning, just having a list of questions that you can ask because you don't wanna be confused and go into the appointment, not know anything, not ask any questions, and then just like not know what happened at the end of the appointment and not remember any of the information that you were given. We wanted to know as much information as possible. Some people don't, which is why this video doesn't always work, but I honestly think that that's such a really great way. I really like how my family handled that. That is honestly the 100% biggest thing. Um, shopping is another thing. So like I said, the wig shopping, the cancer headwear shopping, the other thing that I needed was stuff to help me recover from surgery. Uh, lots of cancer patients have surgery and lots of cancer patients have different types of surgery. I was going to have drains. I got special shirts that I could put the drains in. Lots of people like pillows. Figuring out those things and figuring out the things that the cancer patient is going to need before it happens um, really helps and makes you prepared, takes the stress away. So you're not just getting back from surgery and you need to figure all this stuff out and figure out what kinds of projects will help you if you just have those ahead of time, it's really awesome. Another thing that I talked about in my what to do for a cancer patient video, cooking and cleaning. These are things that are really hard for cancer patients to do, especially when they're going through chemotherapy. Every smell, I'm telling you, every smell sets you off. It makes you nauseous. They're gonna have cravings for certain things at certain times and they're gonna wanna throw up by smelling certain things at certain times. So it's really hard to like clean a bathroom or do the dishes or eat a hot dog sometimes if a hot dog makes you nauseous. Having someone to do those things for you so you can kind of rest 
and lay in bed when you're recovering from chemo, awesome. And that's so, so, so important. Otherwise, all the chores and stuff is gonna just pile up in your house. And that kind of brings me into my next point, which is rest. Just do whatever you can to let them get the rest they need. It is so important to be able to sleep because treatment makes you exhausted. I felt more tired than I could even imagine that I could feel when I was on treatment. Does that make sense? I don't know if that really made sense, but it is ridiculous how tired I felt and I needed that sleep and I needed that time. So do whatever you can to get that person the sleep that they need. Just make their life easier for them. This next thing I talk about in my what to say to a cancer patient video, sometimes talking isn't the best thing. Sometimes listening is the best thing you can do. Your cancer patient in your life is gonna be stressed. They're gonna be anxious. They're gonna feel really bad for themselves some days. They're gonna think that everything sucks some days and just be there to listen to them. That's a really big thing that you can do to just make them feel loved, make them feel like they're not going through this alone, that you'll be there to help them. So the last thing that I have is exercise. A lot of people say, a lot of people say this, that laying in bed is not gonna make you feel better. Sometimes you do need to get out and you need to do things. Now, you need to listen to the cancer patient that's in your life. If they are completely exhausted, completely nauseous, let them sleep <laughs> but um, getting out of the house and getting out and doing things is a great way to just forget about the cancer diagnosis to get some energy because it's really hard to find energy sometimes when you're going through chemo and radiation and other types of treatment gray and i somehow walked two miles around the lake in minnesota my third day after ac chemo which i'm really confused of how that even happened because that is the worst day so it is possible it's possible to go out and exercise even on the worst days i don't recommend it i recommend doing it on uh days that are on your off week if you have chemo every other week but um yeah it's a really nice thing to just get them some energy to get them out of the house to get them feeling kind of more like a normal person and not just a sick person. All right, that's all. Let's just share some ideas around in the comments. It'll be helpful for everyone. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you think my channel will help someone, please share it with them. Also subscribe to follow along with my cancer adventures. And yeah, that's all. Bye.